there. Today I'm going to be working on H page 92. Um, it's going to be a colored page, so it's going to be very long and tedious. Um, but first I'm going to brush my hair. I gotta run to the post office, pick up my Wink single. I ordered Boys Don't Cry um, vintage. Um, I gotta clean up my studio a little bit and then I can get started. Ooh, I got a sticker. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty cute. So that about does it for all of my cleaning. I'm just about done so I can go back to my studio and get to work. Um, yeah, so you get to see me do some color illustrations which is sort of unusual for my channel. So that'll be fun. So before I get started, started, um, I just want to tell you guys um, I'm going to do this page a little differently than I did my last um, fully colored page. My last fully colored page was a digital traditional combo. My last fully traditional page was this page. Page, what is this? 62. Um, as you can see, it's kind of large. It was too large to fit in my scanner, so what I did was I shoved each and every corner into the scanner, and then I merged them all together in Photoshop, and it took a really, really long time, and it was complete torture. This page right here took about 14 hours, and as you can see, it's pretty panel heavy, meaning there's lots of individu individual pictures. Um, it looks cool, but it wasn't fun. It was it was like torture. So for this page, um, page 92, I'm going to draw all of the traditional images separately and then digitally merge them together into one page. So <clears throat> it's going to be traditional, but it's going to be digitally arranged if that makes any sense. Maybe once I'm done it'll kind of click in your head if that doesn't make sense to you. Alrighty, for this voiceover, I guess, since I... I don't know what to talk about, um, I'll talk about my cat, since it is a colored drawing. I'll talk about something a little bit more lighthearted and fun, you know, because coloring is supposed to be fun. Um, I have three cats. The I'll start with the oldest one. And I'll just go by age, I guess. So the oldest cat is my Siamese. Her name is Hani. Um, Hani is actually short for Hanako. I named the lead character in my comic after my cat. <laughs> um, she doesn't really respond to Hanako, though. That was the name my aunt gave her. Um, we actually got her from my aunt when I was 10. So that makes Hani. She'll be turning... 16 this year. She's old and she's tiny. She's only five pounds. She's a little um, chocolate point Siamese. Um, it was my aunt's dream to have a Siamese cat. Um, so she came from a mill so it's kind of mm, sketchy. Um, so yeah she is pure. Apparently she had paperwork but my aunt never produced the paperwork. 
um, the reason why my mom adopted the cats is because um, my aunt was starting to get serious with, I believe, with the guy she's with now. So she was serious, but he was allergic to cats. So she was um, looking to give up the cat. Her, she had one, she had two cats, and she wanted them to be home t together. And that's kind of difficult to do. You can convince people to adopt one cat, but you can't adopt like force them to adopt like two. Especially if one's like a purebred Siamese and then the other is just a tabby cat. Um, so my mom was like, don't be weird because my aunt was threatening to put them to sleep if she couldn't home them together. And my mom knew she wasn't joking because she had done that to her childhood cat, um, Junior, I think was the name. Um... So my mom knew she was serious and was like, don't be crazy, let me adopt the cats. And Hani became really attached to me. Um, she was always, she'd run up the stairs after me when I was a kid. Like when I'd go to bed, she'd like, I'd hear her little bell and she'd come jingling up the stairs. It was so cute. So yeah, that's the story of Hani, my little baby. And then second oldest is um, Zai Kitty. He is my big tuxedo kitty. He is 15 pounds and he's an angel and he's sitting right next to me. He's the cat that gets his own chair next to me because if if I don't give him his chair, he scratches me on the butt. He'll like grab my clothes and because he has claws. My two big kitties have claws and then Hani is declawed because that was you know, 16 years ago before people were kind of changing their views on declawing and stuff. Now I would never even think about declawing a cat, but, you know, a long time ago, people acted like it was weird to not declaw them, like you were some sort of, like, psycho. But it's different now, and it's weird to declaw your cats. But Zykitty, he does scratch the carpet sometimes because he's a jerk, but just in that one spot. He doesn't care about anything else. He, we have a scratching post for them. Anyways, Zai Kitty was adopted off Craigslist by our old roommate. Yeah, he was being given up because the owner was allergic. And his original name was... I know, I'm talking about you. He doesn't understand phones and stuff. And like, he doesn't understand when I stand and just talk. And it's not I'm not talking to him. He gets really, really annoyed. Um, yeah, his original name was Chocolate Chip, which is the stupidest name I've ever heard. But then again, Zai Kitty's a weird name. My roommate named him that. I didn't get to name any of my animals. Um, but yeah, Zai Kitty's big 15-pound angel. I love him a lot. I think he's perfect. He's sitting on my lap right now because I'm hugging him. I love him. Okay, you go to your chair. Yeah, Zai Kitty is probably the least problematic animal I have. He's really, really calm and mild. And I guess he's a little on the needy side. He loves to burrow face first in blankets. That's a favorite thing of his. If he sneaks into the bedroom, I'll just leave him in there. And when I open the door, he's just like on the bed like covered and I'll be like where is I kitty and I'll lift up the blanket and he'll be like meow here I am it's so cute he's a good boy um and then I have a third cat she's the youngest she was actually brought to the house she was also adopted by our old roommate <clears throat> she was brought to the house as a kitten she was a teeny tiny little tiny kitten um she was so small I think she was the runt of the litter, and now she's big. She's a big girl. She's 11 pounds. She's top cat of the house. She beats up Zai Kitty. She beats up all the other cats. Um, she's a little uh, special. Special needs cat. Um, I don't think she knows she's a cat, but I don't think she thinks she's a person either. She's some sort of weird critter. Uh... She doesn't know how to jump on stuff really well. She used to be super clumsy. She doesn't... 
like to be held or pet or anything like that. She really likes food and treats. Um, she likes to play a whole bunch. She, she'll dive headfirst in any game. Like, she's like a complete bulldozer. All the other cats can't even get any playtime because she just wants it all for herself. Um, she growls at leaves outside of the window. Mm, I, you'd think she'd be growling at birds and stuff, and I look every single time, and it's leaves. It's actually gotten a little problematic because she'll charge the screen, and I think she's gonna fucking break the screen. Because she's just so intent on the leaves and the twigs. I think because she sees the wind blow them, she thinks they're alive. She's not a very smart cat. Um, she's a complete spaz. She really likes water, too. Um, her name is Kitten, by the way. I named her that. Well, sort of. It's like a nickname that stuck. Her original name was Himiko. And... I just thought it was the dumbest name when we never called her that because Kitten is way cuter. But she really likes water. She likes to jump in the shower with me sometimes. And she likes to watch the water. She likes to play with the water as it swirls down the drain. And sometimes she bites at the shower water that's coming down. Uh. But yeah, she doesn't care if she gets soaking wet. Because she's a big, fluffy, white and gray cat. But she doesn't care if, you know, her fur just soaks up all that water. So then she'll jump out of the tub and just leave this big splat mark on the floor. Ugh. She got really sick once. <clears throat> and because she's a weird cat, I, I don't know, I just kind of let her live in my house. And I feed her and, you know, that's about it. But she was sick and she was like laying on the floor, like on her back, and that's not normal. And then she couldn't walk, she was all wobbly and stuff. And I took her to the vet like you're supposed to do. And this vet was like not listening to anything I was saying about her. Like about how she usually acts and about how now she's acting weird. <laughs> and it was really, 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 really stressful and it was like an older white guy vet. And... My boyfriend was with me and he could kind of see that I was struggling. And I think in his mind he was like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll try speaking, you know, man to man, maybe that'll help. And he wouldn't listen to my boyfriend either. He just wasn't listening to either one of us. And this vet was saying, she has fleas because he pulled some dirt off of her fur, which is like houseplant dirt because she was, you know, laying on the floor, probably in pain. Um... So that made me so mad. I was so worried about her. I thought she was going to die because they weren't listening to me. But, yeah, it turns out she had, like, a really bad UTI. So she gets this special um, urinary care food. And she thinks it's treats. So that's super awesome. So she'll never have a problem like that again. But I also, I don't go to that vet anymore with her. I take her to the, there's an all-feline vet in my city that I take her to. And they're way nicer to her. And me. Like, I told them that she's kind of mean to strangers. Because at the old vet, they would take her to the back. And they said that they were clamping her down. And that used to sound really scary to me. I was like, is that normal? But then I told this new vet that she's kind of scary and mean to strangers. And they just had two people in the room. One person with giant hawk handler type gloves. Just kind of holding her down nicely. And it's like, I mean, they could have taken her to another room and done that. Because I feel like she's not, like, she doesn't like me. So I'm not a huge comfort to her. But either way, it was it was nice that they listened and that they were humane about it. Whoa, but that was the same vet where they had, like, a cat statue in the waiting room. And she was growling in her little cat carrier. So I had to, like, turn it away from the stupid statue. I really love the kitten. I wish she loved me back, but she doesn't, like I said, she doesn't like pets or cuddles or anything like that. She kind of sits on my boyfriend's lap sometimes. 
That's about it. Gosh, this drawing really did take forever. It's kind of neat to watch, watch me do like marker stuff. Because it looks like I'm not doing any work at all. <laughs> The colored pencil drawing took forever. I kind of regret doing that, but then it looked really cool, so... Oh well. Also, I share this my studio with the cats. Technically, it's supposed to be like the cat room, but I also took it over as my studio space. So that's why the cats are always around me, is because technically this is their room, but it's my room too, because I pay rent and they don't. So I have problems with cats jumping on my scanner and keeping them off my desk and off my laptop. They like to sleep on it, even if it's open or closed, like it doesn't matter, they want to sleep on it. And I have to keep my finished art in drawers because otherwise they'll sit on it or some shit. Cat, cat stuff. This is also the only room that's carpeted in my apartment, so all of the cat hair just drifts into here and sticks to the carpet so that's kind of a pain that's why like I like to ideally I like to clean every time I do a page of my comic because that's like roughly every four to five days and it definitely needs to be vacuumed by then I could probably vacuum every day and get get hair up honestly <laughs> this carpet's probably just made of hair by now I worked really hard on those stupid clouds, but they still look like crap. I'm not very good at drawing clouds. Also, I just refilled my marker that I used for Desmond's skin, but it still turned out like uneven, like right in on his face. Right on his face. Oh well. I do do some minor Photoshop corrections on stuff. Like, I accidentally got some blue paint on Nellie's face from airbrushing. I should have covered it a little better. That's what I'm doing right here. I'm just kind of zoop, 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 getting rid of that. I left some of the blue paint on her, like, forehead up by her bangs and on her neck because that's not, to me, it's not important. The only thing I really care about is, like, the character's like faces like if if their arms are weird or they're like color wise not anatomy wise like if their arms or neck or anything else turns out weird I don't care but if it's their face I care I like that I was able I like doing all of these separate because then I could color correct every drawing individually because it's a little harder when they're all together to get every single image to be its best, I guess I should say, to to bring out its potential. That's stupid sounding, bring out its potential. <laughs> um, yeah, see there, I'm color correcting all the weird spots right in the middle of his face, poor guy. <sighs> Also, I like being able to rearrange my panels. See, like I had this layout, I kind of just imagined it. Before I really drew anything, I thought this was a cool layout, but then it really didn't work out and I kind of rearranged it a little bit. Not too much, just a bit. I wish some more of Nellie's ponytail would show because I worked hard on that. Maybe I'll post that separately. I'll probably post the picture of them as kids separately too because it's really good. At least I think so. Well, even if it's not good, I worked really fucking hard on it. <laughs> I'll post it anyways. I do like that little drawing of Allison running too. For some reason, I could not draw that speech bubble. I ended up plugging in my tablet so I could like draw it well. 
I should have drawn that traditionally, but I didn't think I had enough to do that. I ended up deleting those two. I guess I was trying to make thought bubbles, but nothing was going to fit in there. And I did end up inverting the one pink drawing of Nelly because the flashback drawing is too pink. So I needed, I wanted some more like contrast. And then I pulled for the font colors, I always pull from the image that the font is on. So like that inverted Nelly drawing, I pulled some of the blue from like her hair for the font and then for the flashback, I pulled some of the darker pink right above Nelly's head for the for that font. And then there was a bunch of white space, so I wanted to fill it in with some just something. So I'm doing some blues to try to match the inverted Nelly. So I could just fill up that white area because, I mean, it looks bad all white. It looks way better with some color back there. Yeah, see, I'm trying to match it. That's what I'm doing with all the color bars. Alright, so that about does it for this video. Um, I'm done with my page. I'm exhausted. I think I'm just gonna go to bed and I'll edit this video together tomorrow and decide what my voiceover is gonna be and I'll let you know then. Goodbye. Yay.